Welcome to episode six of Lessons from a Horse. In this episode, I'll be interviewing energy coach Kate Baldwin. Kate is a UK-based equestrian sports scientist who specializes in using horse-friendly training methods, which focus on using functional biomechanics and communication rather than physical control. After a lifetime of working with horses in different disciplines and having gained a master's in research degree in equestrian performance, Kate has created a simple training process for any rider wishing to improve the partnership and performance with their horse. Kate works with riders using a holistic approach to offer personal energy management coaching to help them to become the best version of themselves for their horse. This focuses on analysis of the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual domains of energy and identifying strategies to overcome stressors to create an easier and happier environment in which the horse and rider can flourish in partnership. Well, nice to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, energy oh, no, thank work. you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Um, energy work is something I'm super fascinated with. So I'm really excited to talk with you and learn more about what you're doing and what you're offering. So really cool stuff. Um, so we can go ahead and get right into it then. Um, Great. So why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself, kind of your background, how you got started with horses, and how you got into the energy work and that kind of thing. Um, okay, well, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously from the UK. Um, I live in, I currently live in South Wales in the UK. Um, I've lived in various different places around the UK, and I've kind of worked, worked in a number of different locations. Um, but I've always worked with horses in various different disciplines. Um, it was never really an active choice that I was going to kind of end up working for horses. It just kind of happened. Um, I, I mean, I always had horses very, from a very young age when I was a child, even though my parents weren't particularly into horses. Okay. Um, I... I mean, as I was growing up, my grandmother had a farm, so we always had ponies available there. And I spent the majority of my childhood just kind of going out, playing around in the fields, playing with ponies, playing with animals, like whatever animals were on the farm. And just having a bit of a a lovely time, really. Um, So when I left school, I wasn't really sure what to do, but I knew that I loved horses. And at that point in time, um, equine colleges were just beginning to get quite big over here. So for want of anything better to do, I thought I'd go to college for a couple of years to an equine college. Um, So I had a lovely, lovely few years, I think three years I was at equine college for. And then the progression from that was to go into the industry and actually get a job working with horses. So from there on, I kind of I did various different jobs, working as a groom, working as a rider. So very kind of hands on with horses. Um, I worked in dressage to begin with. Then I moved on to a yard that was um, it was a lot of uh, bringing young horses on, dealing with hunting horses, so getting them fit and taking them hunting um, and also producing horses for point to point racing so that was really really good fun loads of riding I love it yeah yeah um so it kind of it progressed from there I I kind of then went into more yard management types of roles um becoming you know head grooms yard managers of various different places um one of my later jobs I actually worked on an Olympic dressage yard and I was a head girl there for a short time um I mean absolutely amazing experience it was fabulous and they were fabulous people to work for um however for me it wasn't what I wanted to do you know I enjoyed being um you know I mean being around horses that were kind of 
so fantastically well bred and so highly produced was just phenomenal yeah yeah um but I mean for me I it, it wasn't a riding position and for me I love riding and that is kind of what fuels me um so I moved on from there to um to another position then that um that involved a lot more riding and kind of practical producing of okay. horses and that uh-huh. kind of thing um from there I mean I freelanced for quite a while for a number of years um and then ended up in showing um I don't know if you guys have a big kind of showing community in the US we do um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah yeah uh-huh I mean, it's it's a little, I know it's a little different than over in Europe, but we do have um, a big, big showing community. Yeah, um, I myself actually don't do a lot of showing, um, but it's definitely around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's quite big over here. It's very popular, um, and I ended up working for a big show producer um, as their main rider. So we had anything from about 30 to 40 horses in training um producing them for different clients we had a lot of very difficult horses and a lot of incredibly beautiful horses um and we had a fabulous time going to all the different shows going to the big shows you know kind of spending a week at the Royal International Hall show and then another week at Horse of the Year show then at the end of the season which is kind of um the end of the competitive season then we'd have a little bit of a break and then we'd start again kind of after Christmas producing the youngsters and bringing them out again um so it was fabulous and I loved it um but however I did have a few nasty falls and quite a few nasty broken bones Mm. um which kind of comes comes with it a little bit unfortunately um so at that point, I mean, I had the one injury where I thought, you know, I need to rethink things here because mm. I'd, I'd been badly injured enough that I needed to take about six months off to recover properly. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, so at that point, I thought, right, OK, I need to do something different and I need to do something that I can maybe do for a longer period of time as I get yeah. older. Yeah, more sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more sustainable. Um, so at that point I decided to go back to university and get my degree, which was a huge change in lifestyle. Um so I spent I spent three years then studying for my undergraduate degree. And alongside that, I was also freelancing as a rider and as a coach. Um, predominantly in dressage, also training a little bit with show riders as well, helping them out. Um, So I had three years studying, which was incredibly hard work, Um, but it it was fantastic having worked for so long, because I think I probably worked in the industry for about about 13, 14 years, I think, before I went Uh back to university. So I'd had a lot of experience in a lot of different disciplines. Then going back to university and learning a lot more in depth about the theory behind things. So, you know, equine physiology and, you know, all the science side of everything. Yeah. Um, The nutrition as well. I'm really big into nutrition. I love that side of it. Okay. Um, But what really, really got to me was the horse and rider performance and looking at all different aspects of horse and rider performance. Um, So I um, I did I did my research into back pain in riders um, and that produced a research paper, which was then presented at the ISIS conference, the International Society for Equity in Science. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that was that was pretty phenomenal, actually, researching yeah. the levels of pain that riders are actually experiencing on a daily basis mm. and talking to them about about the kind of effects that that has on them in their day to day life. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, some really some pretty 
some pretty big things that were going on that people were then saying, you know, this is actually affecting my horse. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know. So that, um, I actually, I went through a period of dealing with back pain myself, and I can definitely relate. And I know that can certainly have an effect on your horse and even your life outside of horses and everything. So I can appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think it kind of it comes comes with it a little bit, doesn't it? Um, but I mean, particularly, you know, all of these riders that were saying that they were getting injured and they weren't actually doing anything about getting better. So they weren't mm -hmm. giving themselves any time for recovery, mm -hmm. um, you know, and as a consequence, then they were they were struggling then in later life yeah, with the aftermath yeah. of these injuries. And, you know, they were reporting things like like frustration with the horses because of because of the pain that they were mm. experiencing mm -hmm. it was then making them a little bit more kind of on edge mm. yeah. Um, yeah and you know the effect that that can then have on the horse is you yeah, know it can be significant. significant yeah yeah um so from there following that research I then decided to go on and do a master's degree so I did a master's in research in equestrian performance um because I wanted to look at this in a little bit more depth and at this point, I was then introduced to the concept of personal energy management by a professor that had, um, that had joined the university at that point. And to me, I just kind of I just fell in love with this concept because to me, it it was a culmination of everything that I've been learning about in terms of all the kind of physical and mental aspects of horse and rider performance yeah and, and it kind of it brought it all together and then from there riders actually then had a way forward to try and improve their quality of lives and therefore the quality of their life with the horse as well um yeah definitely and you know as well as i mean with the competition aspect mm -hmm. as well okay yeah um which I mean this this is a kind of thing that over here I mean you guys probably do it in the US as well with your um with your Olympic riders um but you know energy management is something that we that we look at very much in terms mm. of marginal gains for our elite riders yeah yeah, yeah definitely and I think it's something um, that's becoming more and more people are thinking about it and becoming aware of it. So um, that's definitely. really cool to see it becoming more, I guess, mainstream, um, you know, where more people are talking about it and um, it's just becoming a lot more thought about. So, yeah, it's really cool to see how that's coming out more. Definitely. And I think it's it's being used a lot more, particularly in the US, it's being used a lot more in business and in a, in a kind yeah. of corporate environment. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and people are starting to recognize now that, that managing energy actually has a really big effect on people's output and their performance in general, yeah. uh -huh. which is obviously then going to be beneficial to companies right. Um, right. Yeah. and their, yeah. their kind of corporate output. Um, so yeah I kind of I, I did a big research project then in terms of looking into personal energy management in dressage riders um, and not very surprisingly I found that nobody that I interviewed and worked with during the course of this research project even gave the slightest thought to their energy levels and how they okay. would go about managing it. Interesting yeah. And it yeah, has such yeah. an effect on our horses too. Yeah. Absolutely. But you know, it just it doesn't even occur to them. They just yeah. kind of they seem to accept that they are continually exhausted, both <laughs> physically and yeah. mentally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they know that this has an effect on them and yeah. an effect on their horse, but they don't actually know how to go about improving it yeah right right they're just kind of stuck in like you said exhausted all the time and not really knowing how to change things yeah uh-huh absolutely absolutely i've and been there too <laughs> <laughs> I've been there and i think it is you know it, it's not something that you ever kind of become an expert at or you mm -hmm. kind of 
you do these kind of things and then it just fixes your life I think it's a continual thing oh definitely um, definitely but I mean I I was working predominantly with competitive riders because obviously you know thinking about the way that you're managing your energy can have this huge effect on the horse and a huge effect on your actual performance in competition um and we saw some some really quite big effects just from riders being aware of their energy management strategies not necessarily doing an awful lot about it but just being aware did actually make them manage themselves and their time at competition in a better manner um, and actually then produced better competition results mm. um, which is really really interesting but what what I'm really more interested in is really getting to that aspect of you know your average rider because mm. yes a lot of us compete um, and you know we can utilize that kind of effect then um, but you know the majority of us probably don't compete mm -hmm. um, okay. but you know we still we like to we like to work with our horses we mm -hmm. have our horses mainly because we enjoy them and we like spending time with them mm -hmm. and you know that time can actually be improved by being aware of your right. energy and how okay. you're actually interacting with your horse um and I think a lot of the time we're told you know, we're told to be aware of our energy when we're working with horses. But what does that actually mean, you know, to your average person? How how do you even start to go about managing your energy or yeah, yeah, turning like, up? You think about way? like when, you know, I'm afraid right now or, you know, I'm angry right now. And that's kind of, I think, the depth that people take take it. But it can go so much deeper. Um, Absolutely. You know, yeah, I'm being more aware of yeah all the subtle changes and everything um you know we think about you know like you don't want to be you know showing fear to the horse and then can sense your fear but there's a lot more to it than that so yeah it's it's kind of it's kind of gone on from there really I mean this is this has been a big interest of mine for a long time along with dressage training and kind of working with my own horses and um you know working with with other people and their horses and just trying to basically help people have a better time with their horses mm -hmm. you know and kind of improving improving yeah, the yeah. relationship between people and their horses yeah awesome so that's that's kind of where I am at the moment yeah so um you're offering energy coaching now I believe um do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah so um I mean basically I'm I'm at the point at the moment I'm in the process of setting up a business so okay. the website is under construction at the moment it's not quite live at the moment but it hopefully will be within the next kind of couple of weeks um but I am I'm going I'm going to be offering a range of different things so um my business is called Precision Equestrian Consultancy um, and I'm looking to offer like a holistic kind of support package to riders and their horses. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to be offering people, both as part of a package in terms of like a full support program, but also as a standalone program that people can just access if they particularly want this energy coaching, okay. is um, I'm going to I'm going to offer this this personal energy management coaching program where people can actually work with me so basically we kind of we we go we go through a range of um a range of different sort of aspects of energy so with energy we're looking at four different domains so we've got the physical aspect so we've got physical energy we've got mental energy we've got emotional energy and then we've got what is called spiritual energy and a lot of people, when you say spiritual energy, a lot of people think, oh, that's something religious, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe that's not particularly for me. For a lot of people, mm -hmm. it will be for them. Um, but, you know, it can be spiritual energy is more about or I like to think of it as being more about personal growth. OK. Um, mm -hmm. That personal fulfillment and, you know, 
be, being really what you what you want to be in life and okay. fulfilling uh-huh. kind of that need for for self fulfillment and okay. and growth and yeah, development. Yeah. yeah. Um. Sense. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's a really big aspect of it, um, and that that can certainly influence all the other three domains. I mean, basically, mm-hmm. the four domains of energy all influence each other. So the physical, sure. the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I do, I break it down into different sections. So I work with riders. First of all, I get them to do an energy audit. Um, so I think it's quite important as well to say, before I go any further, to say what this is not, before I then go <laughs> on to what this yeah. is. So it's not counselling, it's not therapy. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you yeah. know, I'm not a psychologist. Yeah, I'm yeah. not <laughs> I'm not kind of offering therapy sessions or anything mm-hmm. like that to people. What I'm offering is solutions and strategies. So I'm okay. working with the client. It is predominantly led by the client, and that person has to be willing to make a change in okay. their life and be willing to try different strategies to make these improvements within their life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not everything is going to work for everybody, Mm -hmm. but I work very closely with the individual to try and find the thing that actually works for them. Um, So, you know, I, I have a rule. I will only coach people who feel that they are ready for that coaching and who are willing to actually attempt different things to make a change Mm, um you know otherwise you know what I don't want this to be is people who kind of just want to talk about their problems Mm -hmm. and then maybe give something a little bit of a go Mm half-heartedly you know because that is not going to work Mm -hmm. so you know people have got to be willing and ready to start making changes and give different things a go Otherwise, you know, it's not going to work for them. It's not going to work for me. You know, they're going to turn around and give me bad reviews and say, oh, well, you know, I tried that. It didn't work. Uh You know? But really, they didn't try it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it's got to be it's got to be client led. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so what I do, I get them to complete an energy audit where we kind of look at the different domains of their life. So the four different energetic domains. Okay. And they make an individual assessment of where they are actually feeling they are at that moment. Um, And from there, we can then kind of pinpoint where the main issues lie and which domain of energy they're lacking in the most. Okay. Um, You know, some people will be lacking in one or two domains of energy some people will be lacking in or four or some people might be really high in a couple but then really low in another couple okay Mm -hmm. um so what I then do so I do the energy audit to begin with and then I do follow-up calls afterwards so I'm going to be offering a two-month program and in that time I'm then looking at offering four follow-up calls for after so following the energy audit Okay. So we do four follow up calls where we we create a personal action plan. And then with every call, we review that we talk about the issues. We put in place different strategies and different plans then to help people overcome this. Um, And these might be quite small changes that they make or it might be really quite radical changes. Um, You know, it depends on the person and what they feel they need. Um, but then hopefully throughout the course of the two months that, that they can actually find things that, that work for them, you know, and make these changes. Mm-hmm. And within the two months, you know, things get a little bit more like habit. And okay. mm-hmm. I'm there to provide the support. So the ongoing support and mm-hmm. encouragement for them. But they're creating these these changes which are then becoming a habit yeah. over the two months and then hopefully they can then continue with that um yeah, yeah. so it's kind of it, yeah so it's up to them to kind of take that and make those changes and follow through on it and yeah 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, I'm going to be offering this as part of a full support program as okay. well. So I will I'll take on people who want to train with their horse with me as well. Okay. Um, and then all people who then also want to have this energy energy management coaching as part of that. So it's okay. Gotcha. It's more holistic development program. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Very cool. Yeah, it's um, it's good fun. It's really good fun to work with different people and, you know, and see what changes they can come up with and how that yeah. actually changes their life because it really can be a really big shift in energy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, particularly where people are actually, you know, they're doing something just because that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they don't really know why they do it it's paying the bills Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know they're not really particularly enjoying it Mm -hmm. and you know you can kind of you can turn that around with people so that they are they're then doing something which is a lot more fulfilling to them Mm -hmm. um you know whether that is completely changing their life or whether it's just Mm -hmm. replacing two little different aspects of their life okay um, and that makes a huge difference yeah yeah it's, it's all about identifying those aspects of your life that drains the energy from you okay and then putting little things in place that's gonna change that and boost your energy and you know give you a different kind of outlook and a different way of life that you can then sustain going forwards okay very cool hopefully very that cool. makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah I think it does yeah yeah that sounds cool. awesome yeah very cool um so it sounds like you've had a lot of pretty amazing experiences with horses throughout your career. Um, have horses taught you anything um, that has affected your life kind of outside of horses? Can you talk about how maybe the energy work has affected your life and getting into that a little bit more? Oh, I think, <laughs> I think being around horses is is a continual learning experience. And I think sure. the more that I, the more that I learn and the more I become aware of, the more I realize there is so much more to learn. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and very, very often it's a case of, you know, you just, you completely throw your previous ideas out the window because mm-hmm. you've just learned something brand new that you've never yeah, heard of before. Yeah. And it just totally turns it around. And you think, well, everything that I've believed in all these years, actually, now, <laughs> completely that's a load of rubbish. <laughs> and, you know, this is the way I should be doing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I think horses have definitely taught me to keep an open mind. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, definitely. You know, and keep keep learning and keep keep being open to learning and open to new ideas. Um. I think also the other thing that I've very much learned is that everybody has their own struggles. You know, you might kind of look at other people and think, oh, they've got the perfect life. I'd love to be like them. Um, you know, particularly now that we've got social media. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody posts <laughs> their best self on social right, media. Right. Yeah, we only share our perfect pictures on social media. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, but underneath it, you know, everybody is, everybody's just the same. You know, everybody has their own struggles and, you know, everyone is just trying to do their best. And I think horses are very, very good for just kind of just teaching you to be present Mm -hmm. and you know just being being very aware um you know and and that awareness of not being perfect and you know not expecting other people to be perfect as well you know we all make mistakes Mm -hmm. we're all just kind of trying to get along Mm -hmm. um you know and I think in general we I mean, hopefully, most people are quite accepting of horses making mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that's certainly something that I'm trying to be very kind of mindful about at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I think when it comes to other people, we're, we're almost a little bit harsher with that, you know, and yeah, we don't yeah. uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. I like it when other people make mistakes. And get <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, I, I myself, I'm really, really hard on myself if I do make mm-hmm. a mistake and if I get something wrong. I think a lot um, of us are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it's all a learning process, isn't it? You learn yeah. by making mistakes. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's why I think particularly with my with my training, with my coaching, it's really, really important then to have this kind of safe learning space mm, yeah. where, you know, where people are comfortable to make mistakes yeah. so that they can then move forward and, you know, actually learn from it. Mm. But, you know, I think it's in today's world, particularly if you're a competitive rider, it can be very, very hard um, because you're trying to fit in. You know, you're trying to produce the best possible performance. You're trying to yeah. fit in with everybody else. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of pressure. You know, yeah. A huge amount of pressure. And I think, you know, young people these days are specializing very, very early. Um, you know, we've got all of the youth development programs mm-hmm. and you've got you've got people who are basically kids competing mm-hmm. at international levels. Yeah, yeah. Um. And it's, it's a huge amount for them to cope with. And, you know, obviously we want riders to be able to continue riding for their entire lives, you know, and, mm-hmm. and always be around horses and enjoying that. But I do think that amount of pressure when, when people are so young can have that negative effect. So I think mm-hmm. it's, it's really, really important that everybody who's involved in training horses and riders is very aware of kind of, you know, just just being aware of that pressure mm-hmm. and the effect that it can have on people and wanting to actually keep keep alive that reason why we all got involved in horses yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think like you were saying before, creating a safe space. Um you know, that's something I always try to do with my own students is having a place where it's okay to make mistakes and we're here to have fun. And yeah, you know, we want to um, do the best that we can and reach the highest level that we can. But, you know, really, it's all about just our love for the horse. And that's what got us into this in the first place. So let's try and make sure that we hold on to that. Absolutely. And I mean, the other thing I think that horses have taught me is the importance of just slowing down. Mm, Yeah. Um, (laughs) You know, because we we (laughs) live in kind of this world where we're all a little bit crazy and we're trying to pack it as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, if we're like that around our horses, it kind of freaks our horses out. (laughs) Yes. Um, (laughs) You know, I mean, the amount of times I've kind of, I've come home after a really tough day at work and I've been in a rush to go and get my horses in and they're out in the field just kind of enjoying being out in the field having a lovely time and they're waiting for me to turn up to come and get them in for the night Mm -hmm. put them to bed and of course I turn up and I'm I'm quite sort of I'm quite tense Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know I'm thinking about everything that's gone wrong in that day Mm -hmm. and then what happens my horses don't want to be caught yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. yeah you know and <laughs> it's not surprising you know because I think horses are really good at teaching us that you know mm-hmm. if we don't yeah. present ourselves to horses properly they don't want to be around us yeah yeah yeah, yeah and I know getting- I I can definitely relate to that um one of my mares is very sensitive to energy and that kind of thing and I know sometimes I kind of you know get in my routine and I just walk out to get her and I'm not really thinking about things or I'm thinking about you know whatever else I have to do and I just kind of you know and rushing up to her and can't catch her then but if I just and I I always know as soon as she walks away from me I'm like okay <laughs> let's slow down a little bit here (laughs) take a pause and then as soon as I quiet myself down she actually comes right up to me so yeah it's really really interesting how perceptive they are to those kinds of things and they really do kind of force us to become more aware of what we're doing and kind of think about things and slow down a little bit like you said yeah 
they do. And I mean, I think we've probably all had an experience where we've sort of where we've had a really bad day and then we've got home and it's all gone wrong with our horses. And then mm. we've just ended up kind of sitting there in tears, mm. tears of frustration. Mm. Um, but, you know, I think this is this is what I'm trying to do is make people a little bit more aware of how they present themselves to their horses, but also. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's taught me a lot about how I actually then present myself to other people as well. Um, sure, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, you know, because I think, you know, if any of us turn up in in that kind of a state and we then try and interact with other people, mm-hmm. you know, it's probably not going to have the best of outcomes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so I think it's it's definitely about about kind of learning to manage your energy levels in that that Mm -hmm. respect and you know it can make a real difference in your life in terms of you know how much you're actually enjoying your life Mm -hmm. definitely Um, you know and and also that I think with horses it's very much taught me as well that you don't have to give everything a reaction and I think that goes Mm -hmm. for people as well Mm -hmm. sure you know I mean my horses certainly are, are quite selective about what they respond to with me and and what they choose to ignore mm-hmm. if they you know if they don't feel that like I'm communicating properly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah I think it's very much about not giving everything a reaction and just yeah. responding to yeah. yeah to what is actually appropriate and what yeah. isn't yeah you know and having those, having those healthy boundaries as well with other people yeah yeah very cool um yeah. yeah that's awesome I love talking about this stuff um <laughs> so in your work um in all your experiences and doing the energy work and everything have there been any uh either struggles or triumphs um along the way that you'd like to share that kind of really maybe define things for you or really taught you something um kind of anything like that um I think in terms of struggles, I think it is an ongoing struggle to train horses in an ethical manner Mm. and and to be that kind of that robust example Mm -hmm. against the popular demand Mm. of, you know, rushing horses through training and through performance Mm -hmm. for profit and Mm -hmm. You know, don't get me wrong, I've I've been there. Mm-hmm. You know, I've worked mm-hmm. in that industry for many, many years and I've produced competition horses for many years. Um, but for me, personally, I think there is a better way. Mm-hmm. And I'm now, I'm not interested in producing horses for, you know, for sale and mm-hmm. for, for competition. And I mean, I've... I've competed a lot myself previously. Um, I competed in dressage for quite a number of years and I represented Wales on the Wales team for a couple of years in the senior home international competition that we have here. Um, And don't get me wrong, I loved it. I absolutely loved Uh it. And one day I may go back to it. I'm yeah, not I mean, I think there's a way to do it where you can do it um, with keeping the horse in mind and making it a positive experience for the horse as well. I think there is a way to kind of bring everything together, but um, I definitely know what you mean about horses being rushed and um, that kind of thing too. So it's kind of yeah. an ever evolving thing, you know, I feel like you know, we've always, we've probably all done things where looking back, we're like, "Mm, that probably wasn't a good idea. And that wasn't really good for my horse. And, you know, we're kind of just always learning and growing and evolving. And when you learn something new, then you change things. And, um, you know, we're always learning more about our horses and how we can be better for them. And I think, um, you were talking earlier about keeping an open, open mind and, um, you know, just being willing to make that change. So I think that's kind of where it starts is um, just always learning more and trying to figure out how we can be better for our horses and 
um, you know, making those changes when we need to. And I think more and more people are starting to do that. So um, I'm hoping that that kind of works its way into competition a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I can definitely relate to what you're saying. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, there, there can be a very big divide between people that are for competition and then people that are deadly against it. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't be either one or the other. I mean, I love mm -hmm. competing mm -hmm. and I love watching competitions, um, you know, and I think there are some excellent people who compete and mm -hmm. there are some excellent people who don't compete. Mm -hmm. And then the same the same also applies to the people who are not so good, who also right, right. compete and those who don't. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't think it's necessarily about, about the competition. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's kind of it's a very modern way now of, you know, it's all about money, isn't mm -hmm. it? You know, yeah. juicing yeah. horses mm -hmm. as quickly as we possibly can to mm -hmm. sell them and make the maximum amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, picking up on what you said a moment ago about, you know, we've probably all done things that we maybe shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. But at the time, you know, we kind of we didn't know any better. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, I listened to I listened to a podcast. I can't think who it was, who was hosting the podcast, but it was with Leslie Desmond. I don't know if you okay. come across uh -huh. Leslie Desmond. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she said one thing that really, really stuck with me. And, you know, she said, we've all been there and we've all done things that we probably shouldn't have done in the training of our horses. Mm -hmm. But at that moment in time, we didn't know any better. We were mm -hmm. doing what we were led to believe was the correct thing. Mm -hmm. And that actually we should be letting ourselves off the hook mm -hmm. because we were actually just being a good student at that time. And okay, it may have been a it may have been a poor choice, but that was what we were led to believe at the time was yeah. the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and that that really kind of stuck with me. Um, and you know, like I say, we're all we're all learning all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's it's the people who are trying to kind of show others that are that there is a different way to train horses mm -hmm. I think those people are really really important in today's world because although yes there are a lot of people who do want to compete and do want to make a lot of money out of horses and that's fine that's their thing um, equally there are a huge amount of people who just want to enjoy their horses mm. um, you know, and they need a way of training that is appropriate to them. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I think for those of us that are trying to show a different way of training horses, it is that that kind of that continual struggle to be a robust example against popular demand, mm -hmm. um, you know, and having that having that kind of ethical ability and bravery to stand up and say hey you know this is what I do this is what I believe in mm. and I know it's not for everyone yeah um but you know I'm here to help people yeah. if yeah. they want to help uh -huh. yeah. I think that's that's kind of when you talk about struggles and triumphs I think that is a yeah a continual struggle yeah yeah um but also a triumph too when you do reach those people and are able to show people a better way right absolutely absolutely and I mean it's certainly a triumph then when you when you get to help the people and horses mm -hmm. and you know for me having I mean I've I've got one horse now who he's quite an old boy um but he's my ex-competition horse mm -hmm. and okay we never competed to a very high level because we weren't <laughs> very good <No>. um, <laughs> But, you know, I mean, he's he's 23 now. He's been with me pretty much the majority of his life. Um, you know, and he's been through competition work with me. Mm. And we're now training in a different manner mm. and have been for a number of, a number of years now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really rewarding to see that change in him and, yeah, yeah. and be able to kind of give him that experience yeah, as well. Yeah. 
and show him that you know it's all, it's not all about putting a huge amount of pressure on him yeah yeah definitely um, you know and I think I think there's a lot of really really good work going on in the world now um in terms of looking at equine behavior mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a lot of new things that are coming out that we've never really kind of paid a lot of attention to previously. And I think there are certainly a lot of lessons that can be learned from from listening to that Mm. and incorporating some of these aspects into how we manage our horses and how we train our horses. Um, And I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for all the horses that I've ever trained, I think they have been my 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 biggest teachers yeah, in life. Yeah. You know, every single horse is different. We all know yeah, that what works yeah. for one horse won't work for another. Um so you know you are you are constantly kind of evolving with your training and the way that you interact with your horses, you know, and trying to find ways that definitely that work for, yeah. for yeah. different horses. So, yeah, you know, I think it's just, it's being, it's about being very, very brave and, and being, being brave to kind of live up to that integrity in your training. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Very cool. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, well, I mean, if anyone got yeah I mean we've we've covered quite a bit if anyone's interested in kind of finding out more and supporting me and what I do um I've got a Facebook page which is called Precision um Precision Equestrian Consultancy um like I say it's all very new I'm just kind of setting this up at the moment um but yeah anybody who wants to kind of follow me yeah and I will put a link for that in the uh, notes for this podcast so if you're listening you can go ahead and check out the notes and find a link for um, Kate's Facebook page so awesome cool well then um, to wrap us up here I've got a few more questions for you Um, and these I just want a quick answer first thing that comes off the top of your mind um, you don't have to put a lot of thought into it these are just for fun um, okay. So, <laughs> all right. So here we go. What is one thing you've learned recently? And it can be about horses or anything. One thing I've learned recently. Um, one thing I learned recently, something which I, which really made me kind of sit up and listen the other day, which I think it was something that Karen Rolfe said on Dressage mm-hmm. Naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, she said that as people, we may train many horses in our lifetime our horse has one life, mm. you know, and one opportunity to be trained by by us. Mm. So it's our responsibility to make that horse's life as comfortable and engaging as we possibly can. Mm. So, really yeah. Cool. yeah, that's something yeah. new that I've learned. Different way of thinking yeah. about things, yeah. yeah that's really, yeah. really interesting, yeah. Awesome. All right, share a favorite horse memory. Share, oh, share a favorite horse <laughs> memory. I know there's probably a lot to pick from. <laughs> yeah, there are so many. So many. Um, I mean, I think probably the most recent that springs to mind is I've been taking advantage of the fabulous weather that we've had in springtime here at the moment. And I've just been spending a little bit of downtime and going out in the woods with my with my old horse and just enjoying being kind of out and in the sun and out in the woods just relaxing and enjoying wonderful (laughs) yeah so I think that's my most recent favorite memory awesome yeah all right what is a book you are reading right now or have read recently oh (laughs) no I I have not been reading books for quite a while um the reason being, when I went back to university, um, which although that was a number of years ago now, I I had to make myself a rule because I knew that with running running kind of like freelance work and running a yard alongside studying for university, 
I was not going to have an awful lot of time for my university work. Okay. Um, and I'm not the best student in the world. Although I'm keen, I do like to procrastinate a lot. So <laughs> I made myself a rule that when I started university, until every single piece of work was completely finished and it was done and dusted, I was not going to allow myself to read any books that was not related into what I was mm -hmm. what I was doing mm -hmm. with the horses. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of I spent I spent five years studying for that okay. for both of my degrees. Yeah, so that was yeah. quite a long time that I yeah, didn't read yeah. books in yeah. Georgia. Um, the the one book that I did kind of delve into after that, which although it's a while ago now, I I really kind of went into, I think it's called The Academic Art of Riding by Philip Carl. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I found that absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I quite often yeah. refer back yeah. to that for sort of different training things. Um, but to be honest, at the moment, I tend to, I tend to listen to podcasts a lot. Mm. Well, what's your um, favourite yeah. podcast then? Oh, a number <laughs> of different favourite podcasts. Um, at the moment, I mean, I absolutely love Karen Rolfe's Dressage Naturally podcast. Mm, yeah. It comes out every week. Yeah. Um, that's a favourite of mine. As soon yeah. as that one kind of drops onto my phone, it's there playing in my car because I do yeah. a lot of driving. <laughs> that is one I listen to as well, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, anything I can listen to while I'm driving is mm. a different yeah, yeah. Yeah. bonus for me. Yeah. Um, I also I also like Warwick Schiller. Okay. Mm -hmm. His podcast, yeah. I think. Yeah. He's got some good he, ones. Yeah, he's, he's recently had some really interesting people on his mm. podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it's it's not just about horses and horse training, but you know, wider aspects of life. Mm, it's, right, it's right. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Why opening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's it for books, I think. Really, at the yeah. moment, it's all yeah. about the podcast right yeah. now. No, hey, I mean that's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it can be hard to find that time. So if you can do it, well, I like the the podcast while I'm driving or you know, working or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. Cool. All right. This is a fun one. If you could share a message with the world, what would it be? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. If I could share a message with the world, what would it be? I think my message would have to be to be true to yourself you know and yeah. do do what is right for you because I think it's it's very easy for us to get caught up in day-to-day -day life mm. and to end up doing what we think is the right thing mm. but it's not necessarily what we what we would really like to be doing mm. and what kind of you know what really motivates us mm. and gets us out of bed in the morning yeah yeah basically I think yeah definitely to to be true to yourself and do what you what you believe in you know have that integrity awesome very cool I love that <laughs> very cool all right um awesome so then um if listeners want to connect with you the best place right now is your Facebook page yeah yeah my Facebook okay. page Precision Equestrian Consultancy the website okay. should be up and running within the next couple of weeks hopefully okay awesome um but yeah Facebook at the moment is a good place to get hold of me Great. and more than happy to kind of chat about things and help people out and do whatever I can cool awesome very cool all right well thank you so much for joining me today and chatting with us it's been a lot of fun Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been great fun talking to you and um, I wish you all the best. Thank you for joining me today. I'd love it if you'd share your thoughts on this podcast in the comments. I always enjoy hearing from our listeners. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider leaving a review and sharing with your friends. If you're interested in connecting with Kate, make sure to check out her Facebook group, Precision Equestrian Consultancy. 
and I'll put a link for that in the notes. If you want to learn more about developing a better partnership with your horse, you can check out our website, tuskydressage.com, or search for Tusky Dressage on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And you can also sign up for our virtual classroom on Patreon at patreon.com backslash Tusky Dressage. And lastly, if you're looking to go even deeper into the lessons our horses have for us, you can check out my book, God's Heart Through a Horse's Eyes, available on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. Thanks again for joining me on Lessons from a Horse, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.